back at the John Deere. Um, the more I work on this tractor, uh, the more I see the improvements. Because I, I did have an unstyled one. I see a lot of improvements. Um, that's like the oil pressure. Um, you know, it, it's it's the the logic uh, the logic advancement of uh, the 50, 60, and 70 series from the letter model tractors was to separate the uh, oil pressure uh, regulator uh, from the oil can. That way it, it stopped uh, the problems they were having. Um, okay, um, I've got uh, my oil pressure in, my water temperature gauge in. That's where I'm going to put them. I'm going to put the uh, voltmeter at the top there. And uh, I've got them routed around the routed around the uh, throttle linkage here. Um, I got them through this. What I'm probably going to do is I'm going to take this off, and uh, I'm going to run a little bead of urethane here and here, and that's going to help to keep these from chafing so bad because I don't think they had anything. They might have had some cloth or something there originally, but I'm going to put a little rubber in there. You use silicone or something. Uh, and uh, JD, they routed this as, as straight, as straightforward as they can. I'll probably end up putting a spot tire on there to keep it from wiggling so much. Uh, but right straight pretty much to the water uh, manifold. Uh, I did use a little ultra copper on that. If I can find the tube, I'll show you what I used. Uh, yeah, right here. This is uh, for heat. Anything I get heat around, I don't use ultra gray on. I use ultra copper. Uh, so I put uh, that on with some ultra copper, the gasket, just a very thin little bead of that. Um, and where this seated in there, I put just a very thin little bead around there to uh, check any kind of leak that might, might come. So, okay, we've got our gauges in. We'll probably do some wiring next. Uh, I built me a battery tray. Now this looks like dog crap, but uh, it works quite nicely. It's that Rubbermaid tray I had, and essentially I just heated it up with my torch and then bent the sides, and I just took a pair of vice grips and got it good and hot and clipped it together like that, sprayed a little water on it, that put it back together, and anything that will keep that battery from chafing will be fine. Uh, I'm not worried about aesthetics because you're not going to see that here. So that'll work good. Um, here's our little clip that goes right there. And as you can see, I cut it in half and just uh, tack welded a, a bolt in there to make it a little longer. Again, it serves its function. You're not going to see it and you're not spending a lot of money on it. Um, let's see what else did I do? Oh, uh, I made a pipe. Um, there's the top of that welded on there and I just kind of ground it down a little bit and painted it black. Uh, you can see the insert in it and uh, what I had to do is when I got it done and I thunked it on something it rattled. So I just took my uh, arc welder and looked inside there and, and I just run a bead of weld right there and then I ground it down I, but I went really deep with a weld so it went through and into the into the uh, the part that's supposed to muffle it a little bit inside of it so that ought to work right that'll go uh, right there it's not absolutely perfect I know it'll fit under my garage because it's slightly shorter than the stack. It might not be absolutely factory perfect, but it'll serve its purpose. And uh, I probably have, oh, you know, $15 into it or something. Not a lot. Uh, here's my pipe. I welded my flange on there. Uh, that'll go right up, let's say right up through here. So, bolt on right there, um, and that should be fine. And then a uh, couple of things that I dealt with this before, a couple other tractors. Uh, you can use the square bolt on the outside, uh, but on the inside where you're not going to see it, use a six point, 
because then you can get a wrench or a ratcheting wrench on there because between the fan shaft and the carburetor being in the way you it's really tough to get that square turned enough where you're going to get another bite on it with a wrench so there you go um, our alternator I fit a belt to it's a little loose I need to tension it essentially I need a bolt to go through there and I believe that's 3 8 I don't have a 3 8 bolt so I'm gonna to have to go get one at the hardware store here's the belt I used the first one I got was a little bit too small but this one will work pretty good I'll be able to put quite a bite on that I mean I can I can pull this alternator out to here if I need to so I figure this doesn't need to be way out sticking way out there but there's the size if you can read that of what I used it's 3 8 by 30 and 5 8 inch total and it works pretty nicely I got it squared right up pretty good with the pulley so it's not going to be really wear really bad and there you go so I need a bolt for that uh, I ordered some pipe for this haven't got it yet um, it's going to be another day probably before I have it, before he gets it in stock. I had to special order it. So before I can put any water in, I have to piece of, put a piece of pipe in there, and I have to put a piece of pipe in the water outlet at the bottom. So we have that. So yeah, probably what's next. Yeah, I'll get that all together. I'd sure like to see this thing run again. I want to run it again before the before I put it all together because I want to make sure that carburetor floats correct so I'll probably be doing that next make sure I get the stack on there and I'll get some water in it and a radiator bolted down and it's starting to look like a tractor Okay.